Hello, Lindsay McDougall here from Friends of Rom and the ABC, or for ABC Illawarra at the moment. And I've been vegan for, gosh, 22 years maybe? 1998 probably was when I went vegan. I'm not sure what time you're watching this. Um, my first memory of veganism wasn't probably until about 1996 um, when I... So I grew up in Engadine, the Sutherland Shire, which is uh, kind of north of here. We're in Wollongong at the moment, beautiful Wollongong. The uh, beach is over there and the mountains are over there. Um, and so I grew up in Engadine in the Sutherland Shire, just north of here. There was, there was nothing that I knew. Apparently, apparently a woman that I dated, or a girl at the time, we were, uh, she was vegetarian. And uh, apparently I took her to McDonald's to make, me, to make her watch me eat cheeseburgers. Horrible, isn't it? Anyway, when uh, in 1996 I left school and uh, joined a band called Friends Rom, and um, that was uh, when I, or well, Jason, the lead singer, who's vegetarian, he told me I had to go vegetarian or I wasn't allowed in the band. So that was that was that. That's that's how I uh, decided to go uh, vegetarian. And then uh, our manager Chris, he was vegan. Ben, the guitarist, I replaced. He has a lovely song written about him. He uh, he's also vegan and a lovely guy. And his brother Liam. Uh, it was also vegan. And so basically, I got into this band and suddenly all of the people I was hanging out with were either vegetarian or vegan or hypocrites who knew about it and didn't do anything about it. And um, so I, uh, I, I remember just hearing about it and I'd gone vegetarian to get into the band to impress my new friends. And then I just started reading about uh, things and, you know, you'd find magazines at, uh, at, at restaurants and stuff. I, I was going to Newtown a lot, it's where the band was based. Um, and so I just ended up reading about that and deciding, well, vegetarian is great, but it doesn't really uh, take care of a whole lot of other animals and a whole lot of other issues. So veganism became the pretty obvious thing uh, back then. In about Yeah, I'd say not. I went to vegetarian in like the end of 1996 and vegan in about 1998. Yeah. Um, now, when I first went vegan, what I found challenging was, quite simply, there was nothing to eat. <laughs> I don't know if anyone else was vegan back in uh, the late 90s. In Newtown, it was fine. If you knew where you were and, and what was around, you could get by. There was uh, you know, a couple of fairly good restaurants around. There was the, the Bodhi restaurants in Sydney, which are always good for, uh, for great um, vegan Chinese food and, and lots of alcohol and, uh, and the ikus and a few things like that. But Generally, if we were on tour, I was stuffed. You know, we'd tour across America and people were saying you can't have a hamburger without ham in it and, uh, and things like that, which is kind of ridiculous. And I remember Jason and me trying to order just a sandwich in New York and we tried so hard to let him know what we didn't want in it. And of course, it was full of meat and cheese. Um, so just ha literally having nothing to eat uh, uh, compared to now when there is everything to eat everywhere you can order from any takeaway place you can go to any supermarket there are vegetarian restaurants and health food short stock shops stocked full of stuff everywhere now so what i find challenging now uh i would say it's probably just the um the vegan community as wide and as passionate as it is um trying you know i think there's a lot of gatekeeping in all communities and online you can find your community you can find the largest amount of your community so trying to deal with the more uh, overly passionate understandably overly passionate elements of the vegan community who are aiming their uh, their arrows not at educating meat eaters but at other people from the vegan community that kind of I would say is a challenge for me now seeing people because when I joined Friends of Rom um, I, I was sort of, everyone was there to help me. There was no one saying, I'm, actually, I, Liam, Ben's brother, did say to me, oh, you've gone vegetarian, cool, when are you going vegan? But that was about it. Um, everyone else was like, very helpful. You know, everyone was, I guess, because the community was smaller, the internet wasn't really a thing there uh, at that, in 1998. So everyone was really helpful. And um, it was more about showing you the ways that it was easy to be vegan, because there were less ways that it was easy to be vegan back then. Than, than it was saying, oh my God, you haven't checked the numbers on, of the additives on the back of that. Get, that. get the hell off this internet forum. You're not a proper vegan. Internet forums, what is this, 2004? Anyway, you know what I mean. Um, and so I think that is a challenge that I find, seeing people being turned off the vegan lifestyle by other people being very, very passionate, but maybe not having the greatest communication skills. 
and let's let's be honest, we've all been to, uh, to to vegan conferences and fairs and heard people talk. Sometimes vegans don't have the best communication skills. Uh, but if someone was thinking of switching and considering switching to a vegan lifestyle, I would say that 2020, 2020 as it is right now, there has never been a better time to go vegan. Think about it. Uh, everywhere you go, there are vegan alternatives, um, especially with the way the supermarkets have been this year with the coronavirus. Uh, you know, people have been unable to get their, their staples like eggs. And, and cow's milk and meat, but everything else is on the shelf, the vegan, the vegan uh, uh, parts of the supermarket, which are also, uh, there's a vegan section in supermarkets now. There was nothing like that for years and years, and only in the last couple of years that's, that's popped in, and they were untouched during the coronavirus crisis. So having that access, that easy access to delicious food, and that, I think, as much as passionate zealotry and grandstanding is wonderful, and it'll get you some likes on Facebook, the, uh, showing people how delicious food can be and how good your life can be. I am not wasting away here. Uh, that is a, a great message for people who are considering switching to the vegan lifestyle. We can enjoy everything that anyone else can, can enjoy. We can order a pizza. We can go through a drive through for goodness sake. I did that the other day. That was incredible. I'm sure someone's going to gatekeep that for me. But th this is like, you know, you can get up you can, be, you can be a truck driver who finishes your shift at four in the morning and you can go through a drive through and get a relatively okay meal. You can order a pizza that someone delivered to your house. You haven't got to go searching for it. That is the, uh, the world we're in right now. And you can eat healthily. Because of this weird subset of raw food vegans becoming so popular and this whole wellness world that, uh, you know, is somehow creeping its way into veganism. Side note, animals don't care if you're eating raw food or cooked food. They just don't, they just want you to not eat them. Uh, and and so, as a result, there's all these healthy foods, healthy food in supermarkets that, 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 that is vegan. You know, there's so many delicious, gluten-free, raw, all that kind of stuff that also doesn't mess with animals. So uh, it's really been a ne never a better time, um, which is, you know, pretty wonderful. Now, I've never been bullied for being a vegan. I'm just going through my questions here. Um, Except for like a couple of just silly little ignorant things. I've been bullied for much, for, for, for many, many other things. And possibly with very good reason as well. But no, as I said, moving uh, as I did, leaving university, which was also a very accepting place. I was there briefly after I joined Friends Will Rom. But joining Friends Will Rom, the punk rock community, punk pop community, whatever you want to call it. So very accepting of, um, of anything weird. You know, we thrive on weird. So at the time, vegan being quite weird um, was perfectly fine. The first tour we did of America, which was a bit difficult to eat, um, we were on tour with a band called Discount. Look them up, they're excellent. Their album, A Taxi Is All Right Tonight, absolutely brilliant. They, uh, they're, they're all vegan, all vegetarian, mostly, mostly vegan. And uh, so hanging out with them and obviously the rest of our band, which is now primarily vegan, uh, Dale and Gordy are vegan, Jason still, uh, you know, a cow annoying hypocrite, but that's right, he calls himself that. And, um, uh, and yeah, I, it, it's just, it's never been hard for me to, you know, like to say that I'm vegan or anything like that. It's very rarely, like in my workplace at the moment, there's no other vegan. There's occasionally a vegan there, but it's, everyone's, you know, fine with that. And they're trying. And on my birthday, they, they'll make me a vegan cake. And it's, yeah, it's, it's, no, I, I, there's, there's no bullying. Uh, not, at least not from non-vegans. Um, and I guess the most common myths about the lifestyle, first of all, where do you get your protein? Look at me, strong as an ox. Um, all of that kind of stuff, um, which I think's being kind of disproven now because you can just link people to a million articles and a million photos of bodybuilders, natural bodybuilders and stuff. Um, so that's that's pretty easily uh, disproven. I think the, uh, the, the most other common myth is that we're annoying. And annoyingly, sometimes we are. So, you know, that's the, but then again, in every uh, group of people who feel passionately about stuff, you'll find people who are annoying about it and, and either they're annoying for good reasons or they're annoying with the best intentions. Um, but that's, I think, the, a, a myth that is uh, possibly provable, but certainly uh, not, not on us. We're, we're a lovely people. We're a lovely bunch of people. All right, my favorite vegan businesses. Oh my goodness, very sadly, Anastasia shut down. She was here, she made the best food, best baked food, best uh, it's delicious food. Um, so around here, Key Canteen, when that opens up again, that is great. There's a Thai place, um, Amarin Thai, just down the road in Warrawong, has a whole vegan menu. Uh, that, is, that is amazing. Um, 
I uh, I'm gonna forget some of my favorite. You know, there's like every place. This every place does vegan food, and I appreciate that if there's a place that also sells meat that also is having a go and has a vegan menu or will do a whole vegan thing for you. I think that's pretty that's pretty awesome. But shout outs to you know obviously excellent vegan places in Newtown where I still go occasionally. Uh, there's Golden Lotus, brilliant place. Um, thai Pot Hong has a whole vegan menu, which is great. Um, I love a lot of Thai food and Chinese food. It's, it's, uh, I find that stuff very good. I'm going to, oh, there's the stall in Newtown on Saturdays that does vegan um, vanilla slices and stuff. Oh man, it's been a while since I've been there. Oh yeah. Um, and I have to probably think of some more now, don't I? Is that enough? It's probably enough. Just um, insult me in the comments if I've forgotten your vegan business, which is, uh, you know, which I love. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. Uh, and the future of veganism. Okay, so I think the future of veganism is going to be, well, it's going to be much more widespread, but it's it's going to have a lot more grey areas, I think, than some of the more extreme or more strict vegans are going to like. Because the world, as it is, the population of the world, the geographical situation of the world, the, the, the way that the, uh, the world is, is just in terms of arable land, farming land, all that stuff. We can't feed everyone and we can't feed everyone meat. You know, uh, that's just the way it is. Obviously, uh, there are there's technology involved in this and there's a lot of people talking about meat that's grown in labs, which is, in a pragmatic sense, is vegan. It's cruelty-free. There may have been a, uh, a poor cow that copped it at the start of the whole thing, but, uh, you know, there's probably a poor cow that copped it at the start of your life as well. Uh, and so... In a pragmatic sense, that sort of thing, well, I probably wouldn't eat it, uh, is going to be feeding a lot of the, uh, the, the, the poorer people in, in the world, be that ethical or not. Uh, maybe that'll be something that'll uh, go into a lot of pet food. And as a result, less animals will, will suffer. And that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to do the least possible suffering. So in terms of a pragmatic future of veganism, there are going to be a lot of people who, whether they call themselves vegan or not, are living a cruelty-free life. In the, in the sense of eating lab-grown meat. Uh, in terms of amazing alternatives to meat for people who choose that, they're gonna be amazing, they're gonna be everywhere. We're probably gonna be able to just have a little thought in our heads and uh, you know, it'll send a, a little bing off to the, uh, the shop that'll make it. It'll also send a bing off to ASIO and to Peter Dutton and they can make a note of it if they want to. But that's probably the future of veganism. And I'm guessing, uh, just like in every movement, there'll be people who are absolutely loving it and there'll be people who are very annoyed at it and get very angry and, and vocal and upset on, uh, on Facebook pages. Uh, anyway, this is uh, Lindsay McDougall from ABC Illawarra here, beautiful Wollongong, um, and Frenzel Rom, and uh, enjoy your wonderful day. I hope you enjoyed me banging on for far too long. Thank you.